All right. It is Mental Health Awareness Month, um, and MHSD plays a significant role in resources that are available in parts of Southeast Louisiana. Talk about some of your most used resources right now to people across our area. So currently, um, as you know, we have the entire breadth of behavioral health services because we have pretty much every type of behavioral health specialist there is um, who provides services. That's, um, that's thankfulness speaking, that's not arrogance speaking. Um, but we have found that our crisis need for services have tremendously increased. So much so that that layer of service delivery um, has been ramped up in Metropolitan. I've actually hired a cohort of um, behavioral health uh, specialists who only do crisis training. These are not licensed people. Um, they are people who have specialized training in um, mental health first aid. Um, many of them work with the Louisiana Spirit Group that has provided um, supports, behavioral health supports to people after various crises that we've experienced. For example, um, the Katrina crisis and the needs then, uh, the tornado that we had a couple of years ago. And now, you know, with the weather patterns being so aggressive, um, we really cannot afford to have a team like that that we ramp up periodically because we are always in need uh, for crisis services. They also were very instrumental in helping um, our citizens as well as the citizens uh, from other uh, districts or parishes uh, during the Laura um, wave of hurricanes um, that you know hit our cities um, last year. So crisis is the name of the game. And we've got two arms of crisis. We've got our um, more seasoned or licensed crisis team, and that's our Metro crisis response team that is more familiar to the community because those are the people who go out on calls if necessary um, to de-escalate or make decisions about getting people into a 24-hour environment for services. And they may or may not come with the police because they never know what they're walking into. About 40% of the time, they're not sure, and they really do need police support with them. Um, and that's sometimes difficult because the police, you know, are pulled for other responsibilities and the arm of the police that's actually trained to do mental health um, related interventions is, um, is much smaller than the general, um, you know, police um, staffing. And so we do have that arm that's there all the time. But there are situations now more and more where people who normally have been functioning okay, they need support. Or they were, they were on the edge of teetotaling, on the edge of mental instability, and they've tipped over. And now they really do need a professional intervention. And then, of course, all the grief and loss that everybody is experiencing in varying degrees um, has also required more professional interventions. Dr. Dunham, we've talked about the importance of just talking to someone about how you feel, even if it's not an official you know, medical diagnosis, but just talking to someone. What would your message be to those who are hesitant to reach out? They don't really know how to express themselves. They don't know how to, know how to express their emotions, but they know they need to get better. What would you tell them? So, you know, it is the individual's responsibility to present themselves. It is the responsibility of those of us who are trained in this art to then help them work through the process. So you don't have to know what you're going to say. Uh, you don't have to know how you're going to respond. Um, it's our job to facilitate the conversation in such a way that you get the releases, you get the answers, um, and you get the success that you hope for. So there's no preparedness that you have to do uh, when you are, are not doing well. I mean, you don't clean up to go to the doctor, you just go to the doctor, right? You have uh, an ache, you don't try to take Tylenol for it before you go, you just go. Um, and the same thing for us, you just bring, present your body and your mind to us and trust that we can help guide you to the relief that you need. And that relief comes in all sorts of forms. It could just be talking. And uh, many times we suffer because our perspective on things, how we think about things, how we look at life, um, the behavioral patterns we've engaged in order to settle the complexities of life, they don't work in every situation. 
And so you may need somebody else to retool and help reset your mind in a different direction. Well, how about you try this? Or have you considered this? Or have you thought about this? A so-and-so has had this situation and this is what they did. This might work for you. Um, so those are the types of things that we do in helping people to find resolution, first of all, in how they're thinking. And our thinking very much directs our behavior. And then we can do things that bring us relief. So I say, just come as you are um, and, and, and trust that we can then take you where you are trying to go, which is better. We talk about how the pandemic affected so many people, but pre-pandemic and then post-pandemic, uh, you know, people's mental wellness and keeping their mental health in check is still going to be a conversation. Talk about the importance of doing just that, staying healthy mentally. Yeah, you know, we have needed to do this before the pandemic um, because we have been suffering because of uh, uh, the weight of mental illness. Um, for decades, for centuries. Um, but I think we have so many more people who are experiencing the different from this experience that really helps you to really kind of separate out maybe a little bit better in your mind that um, there is a level of emotional pain that we all experience as just a normal series of events that can be handled by you know, not too very complex things. And usually it goes away on its own, right? That's normal mental experience. But with this event that is hanging over us like a long, long rainstorm, and we're staying under this umbrella for longer than we ever thought we would have to, we have to rethink what is going on with me psychologically that I just can't seem to pull it together, if you will. And so in that instance, because things are changed, and for many, we will say forever changed, um, we're going to have to change our mindset around this. We're going to have to learn how to be different um, in the setting of a different world uh, with a different set of threats that may not be 100% eradicated. And so I think there will always and forever be a need to be open-minded about using the tools that we have in the mental health world to help us. And that, that some people just don't talk to anybody. You know, they just keep things to themselves. They figure either I can't trust anybody or nobody can tell me more than I already know, or I don't believe in all of that stuff. There are lots of reasons why people don't talk to anybody. But what I'm saying to you is that the way we are wired as human beings, conversation is very much a part of um, how we are to be in order to be okay. And so we will forever need mental support. That is so important. Uh, before I let you go, Dr. Dunham, you brought up weather in the beginning and we are, um, I have a, a piece for our hurricane special about mental health and going into hurricane season. Talk a little bit more about, um, again, those services that you all are providing and something that people can do at home right now to prepare mentally to go through storm season, rain season, dealing with still having crazy anxiety from last year. Yeah. Um, you know, the historic hurricane sees that, I mean, we all feel it. <laughs> yeah, we, we absolutely do. And unfortunately, our reality is that um, the earth is changing and um, our, uh, our behaviors, frankly, over the centuries have contributed to why we're in a different world now um, than we have been in prior years. And so it is predicted that um, seasons are going to be more uh, um, horrific in terms of uh, the natural disasters that we are accustomed to experiencing. But I would focus on that only to the extent that it encourages and motivates me or you to be prepared. And so the best way to avoid uh, emotional trauma is to try and prepare for and anticipate it as much as possible. And just like anything else, then guard yourself, shield yourself. And you have to guard your mental health, you do. And so um, denial is not a way to guard your mental health. Um, um, selectively deciding what you are gonna believe or not believe is not a good way to guard your health when there's good data and good support around the fact that yes, this is true. This is absolutely based in fact. And so accept truth, number one. Number two, um, prepare using the best guidance out there. And the best guidance is oft, oft, often guidance that is 
reproducible in a number of different ways or different settings. Um, it's not something that maybe one person is saying in your ear, multiple people should be saying the same thing, test it out um, and, and, and do what you need to do. For the hurricane season, you know, be prepared to move. You know, don't plan to sit still. That's not what you do in a disaster, you move. Um, and because of uh, the natural disaster we have, you have ample time to make those kinds of decisions to leave and to move. Um, and it's also important to make sure that the people you care about are taken care of because one of the worst things is for you to leave people behind um, who you could have taken with you or you could have prepared for, so no regrets. Um, life should not be filled with regrets. And, and having no regrets is very much about preparing ahead of time. Um, and know that if we're going to have losses, you're going to have to have some kind of recovery experience around that. And so accept that a loss brings with it uh, discomfort, emotional discomfort. It creates an absence that will never be uh, fulfilled in the same way. So open your mind to talking to somebody if you have to. And, and that could be a trusted uh, friend or, or relative, trusted is the proverbial word there, um, who you know will keep things confidential and will, will say things that are helpful to you. Or somebody you don't know, but who has been um, stamped and approved by their uh, credibility, their certification and so forth to be um, reasonable and reliable to do this kind of work. So I would say, um, certainly don't operate in denial because we are heading into hurricane season and it may be better, the same or worse than the last one. Prepare yourself to move if you have to, leave, take care of yourself, make sure you think about the people you care about and be assistive to them. And also be prepared to take advantage of any mental health services that are available to you should you have a loss that's overwhelming. All of that so helpful. That'll ease our mind a little bit just to be prepared, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, prepared. I know. Thank you, Dr. Donovan.